Welcome back to the Hang Gliding Files. Today I want to show you how we can set up your system to film your flying adventures in VR using the HP Reverb G2 and you, the Windows Mixed Reality Portal. Now I know this doesn't apply to everyone and we'll talk about that as we go, but it does apply to us. Our main purpose is to film our simulated flying adventures and that's really just the point of the channel. Uh, and we want to have as an immersive experience as we can find and that's going to be VR. And sometimes the best filming and uh, having an immersive uh, experience don't go together very well. So I'll show you uh, different levels of immersion and some comparisons between simulators to uh, illustrate hardware, software, uh, complexity, and what kind of resulting videos we can get from those many configurations. So on the hardware front, uh, we have top-of-the-line PCs and graphic card systems running a GeForce RTX 3090. And we have these because we specifically wanted to be able to film our flights. Remember that, because if you just want to have an immersive flying experience, you can get by with much less hardcore gear. But for VR, we're using the HP Reverb G2, as shown here. It provides the highest resolution at the lowest cost, but it does require some beefy PC graphics to run it. Uh, this VR headset will give you a few years of service until the next generation of VR systems comes on to the market, which they will. Well, as you hear and watch this information, remember two things about what you're watching here. One, everything that you see is a work in progress. Simulated hang gliding in all forms is being built as you watch. Don't judge the systems you see as final products. Just a heads up. And the second thing to note is what you see in all forms is the worst that'll ever be. Everything you see will get better over time and probably better very quickly. All right, let's talk about frame rates. Uh, when you're vo recording video, you need to get at least 30 frames per second for smooth visuals. That's kind of what uh, your TV and every movies, everything plays at that or a little bit less. If you're recording dips below that frame rate, you will see that as jittery. Uh, in VR, anything in the 20 foot frames per second range is disturbing to your health, literally. So it is important both for filming and for VR to have as high a frame rate as you can muster. When you are in VR, in any simulator, what is being produced is actually two visual renderings, each slightly left or right of each other, and this is what produces the 3D image in your brain. This means the recordable output looks like this. If you are not recording your flights, but just enjoying them, then this is no issue. The, but the simplest way to record your VR experience is just to record one of the eye renderings, and that's it. Well, this is one of our previous uh, video recordings from uh, a TFFE session. And if you look on the edges, you can see the little rounded edges in the recording here. And that's because we recorded this um, just from one lens. And this is the kind of uh, video uh, quality that you can get from it. It's fine, uh, except it's just not square. And uh, it technically is off to one side or the other, depending on which lens you use. And this is a sample of filming in MSFS using the single lens approach. Both of these recorded views are just of one eye, but at full resolution of the G2. Unfortunately, the lenses of the G2 are clearer in the middle and get less clear as you move to the edges. If you look closely, you can see this effect, and that makes filming in this mess bit less than optimal. Also, some of the uh, full edges of the screen get cut off to eliminate the rounded corners. So at the very start of uh, the immersion level is the flat panel and this is just a straight up computer monitor. It will show you the full output of what a simulator can do and uh, when it's rendered onto an HD monitor. If I had a 4K monitor we could record this view in a full 4K. But the view is strictly limited to a single camera view at a time. You can change the view, but you rarely think about that when you're flying a task. And it's not very immersive. You're always looking at um, one particular view. You can't move your head around. 
And I want to point out here that anyone with a computer and a monitor that is capable of running MSFS 2020 at all can fly virtual hang gliders like this. You could even do it on an Xbox. Flying virtual hang gliders is not graphically intensive. They are the simplest flying machines ever made. Well, the next step up in, uh, in immersion is using a flat panel, but using a head tracker, uh, um, a device that you put on your head and it tracks your head movement so that as you move your head, the camera moves with your head and it's um, quite nice. It's, it uh, allows uh, a lot of uh, immersion. They're not very expensive and they allow you to film uh, at the highest possible degree so but they are finicky and you need to have a proper environment set up to get some enjoyment out of them but we do use them in our films from time to time because they barely do produce not enough, a good like, output well, you got out uh, all their output would be at the same resolution the as the monitor that you're using uh, day to day so you can do that kind of uh, recording in a full 4k I'm going to show you some snippets of us flying uh, in the south side of the mountain in uh, Utah. And uh, this is a excellent place to uh, test and prototype our gliders because it produces uh, laminar airflow. Um, it's got a very smooth hill. It uh, allows you to really fine tune uh, what kind of performance you're getting out of your glider, uh, allow you to hone your skills and your um, touch on how you're flying the glider and um, you get a really good feedback between uh, your variometer and the ground and uh, the wind and texture. So it's pretty unique in the world. It's nature's own uh, wind tunnel and it is flyable almost every day of the year. So sit back, uh, I'll just show you a few uh, snippets of us flying. Uh, hang gliders here and then we'll come back and I'll tell you how to uh, do this exact same thing in VR. right in front of me like 10 feet in front of me I didn't see you I'm directly behind you I'm gaining altitude like crazy now oh. it got as soon as I got above the lip it got a lot better I wonder if I can go down all the way out towards the end of the ridge here. In these conditions, I should be able to. I'll follow you out there. So I'm telling you, I turned, I went down here, turned around the edge, and flew to Salt Lake City. Hmm. I guarantee you won't do it now. Got a little behind. Locked out of the turn there. Well, you got behind the hill there. Oh, it's sinky over here. I think there's a Venturi going around that edge, that corner. Yeah, that's what it felt like. I drove right into the edge of it. Are you back on the hill yet? Yeah. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt the top landing here.
Well, I can't believe how much they dug out the back side of this thing. Okay, so I'm putting on my spoilers. Slowing her down, slowing her down, slowing her down. Flare. I popped it up a bit, but not too bad. Did you see it? I see you passing by. You know, you could probably fly the back side of this thing in a north wind. As much as they cut that out, mine all that out. What do you see? I'm right, right next to you. I see your shadow right in front, right in front, right behind I'm just, just maybe 30 feet behind you. Let's talk a little bit about the steps to uh, set up filming in VR. These are going to be the things that we do to configure our system so that uh, we can record in VR on a full screen uh, monitor. First up is the OpenXR uh, Mixed Reality Setup. And what you really want to set here is your rendering settings. Uh, typically, uh, we would use 100% for most VR settings. I've gone as high as 150%. Some uh, instances. And for uh, TFFE, I usually use around 50 or 60 percent. Get great FPS and the app looks uh, great. All right, then we set up your mixed reality headset display options in your Windows settings window. This is the key that allows you to mirror your VR sessions. Set your visual quality in your home section details to as high as it'll go. The app window resolution as high as it'll go your experience options the best visual quality and that's the main thing and the frame rate should be at 90 hertz and for us that's because the G2 runs at 90 hertz start by turning on your flight recorder software we use OBS and uh, make sure that's going and recording full screen so once you've done that when you open up your mixed reality portal by plugging in your headset you now have a button at the bottom of the screen, which is a play or pause um, that wasn't there before, and that's because of the previous settings. Once you have that set up, you hit the play so that it starts uh, recording, and then you use the uh, switch the properties so that it goes from single lens to full screen uh, recording. And then the last one is to make the whole Windows uh, Mixed Reality Portal uh, go into full window mode. So put your headset back on, push the button in Microsoft Flight Simulator that flips you into VR mode and the simulator is broadcasting the two lens version. You uh, get out of the headset, switch the view to make the uh, Windows uh, Mixed Reality Portal to be the top frame and get back into your VR uh, headset and you are now recording uh, full screen VR uh, because you're recording the mixed reality portal mirror. Well this is going to be uh, a snippet of code of me flying in VR uh, and being recorded on the full screen mixed reality portal uh, mirror. 
So the information that you see in yellow there, uh, that's indicating my frames per second, that's a, another piece of software called um, OpenXR Toolkit. And I use that just basically to uh, verify what kinds of frames per second I'm getting so that we can make sure that we're um, getting the highest performance that we can with our current settings. Also, uh, from a visual point of view, uh, there's a lot of movement and that's because I move my head and that's a reality when you're flying um, in VR. And that may not be the best uh, platform for some video to watch, but it's by far the best platform for producing uh, the most immersive experience. So we also use a bit of software called SkyDolly, which records uh, all your flight information while you're actually flying. And you can come back after the end of the flight, replay your flight in a fat, flat panel uh, display and do all your other camera shots of the same flight that you're getting, even though you experience that flight in VR. All of the uh, entry shots that you saw in this video at the beginning, those are all uh, Sky Dolly uh, recordings of this particular flight. Well, that's how we're recording uh, in VR and how we go forward. I'm sure we'll uh, have mistakes and we'll find uh, even more uh, tidbits that would be uh, helpful in making the videos even better. Uh, if you want to see more of this and follow along with our progress as we make the glider and the videos uh, better as we go through this, uh, you know, comment below, like, and subscribe. Hope to see you out on the hill. Later.